a round of applause again for all of our founders. <laughs> have to say, I've seen you pitch at least three times, at least three times, and it gets better every time. So wonderful pitches. Uh, but you know, let's dive a little bit deeper about your startups. You are all working in various industries, very different, very diverse. And I'm very, very curious, and I'm sure our audience is curious as well, what propelled each of you to start your business, found this startup, what started it all? Maybe I can start with Leslie. Yeah, so I, I was working at uh, Amazon in product management. I was previously an engineer, and I was out in the US, and, and I started to think about uh, what was going on within the continent in Africa. Quite a lot of growth, as I mentioned, urbanization. And there was also a big gap in terms of um, even looking at investments going in. And I did see it as a gap. And having learned what I had at Amazon, I really started thinking about you know, the fact that in, in the next two decades, there's going to be, I mean, Africa is going to be um, home to 10 of the world's mega cities, and it's going to be hosting over a billion citizens. And I thought to myself, how do we reach these consumers? Um, and of course, that was through thinking about um, scalable distribution systems. And, and for me, I, I knew that I could do the technology, having done that. And I was looking for a co-founder uh, with business experience, and we felt that was the right opportunity. It was a big opportunity, big growth, and that's what really drove me to think about going back home uh, and starting the business. A slightly alternative approach to setting up a company. Um, my co-founder and I went to high school together, and we did a school science project that was about helping people who have noise damaged hearing, also known as tinnitus. And for the science project, we developed a sound therapy for people to listen to that would help them with their tinnitus. And when we brought it to the competition, uh, the people there that were visiting all wanted access to this, this therapy we'd developed and we were about to finish high school, so we had no idea how we would get it to them. But we were approached by our local enterprise office in Ireland and they said, you know, you could become a business and that's a way for you to continue your research to actually sell this to people and get it online. So this was in 2009 before digital health was really a thing, but we graduated from high school and launched our sound therapy that summer. But the biggest thing that kind of came to us from working with those people was how they all experienced their noise damaged hearing. And it was overexposure to loud noise in the workplace, whether it was in a factory, if it was the military. And we had to look at what was actually happening in the acoustic material space. And you know, they hadn't innovated in decades. They were making changes to foam by making it blue, but not more effective. And we said, you know, we have, we're physicists. What can we do when it comes to new materials? Can we look at the way that they're making materials and the way that material absorb energy and create something new from that space. And that's when we developed our new material, Soundbounce. And since then, we've been working on building and developing it all throughout our time at university and now uh, running our company in Ireland and working with industries all over the world to change the way that they actually make materials entirely. Yeah. So my story is pretty much more, uh, more of like an academic sweep, it's actually uh, academic change from uh, pure research to business or to startup because, well, I did my PhD research about civil engineering and specifically was targeting out to how to make the building be more durable and sustainable. And we have a, like a lot of seminars. It's exactly like what we are now, like having this massive conference with industry, people, with investors, and so many people that are interested about new technology. And by having the seminars, and having the conversation with the industry people. And we know that, well, only having these materials in the lab by testing is not enough. We have to commercialize it. We have to find a way to do more trials. We have to find a way to actually make people to see that in industry. But that's why we're thinking, well, how can we approach this as uh, well, people doing research? So then I started to approach for the Jack Business School. They do a lot of like connections and like accelerators. And then I started to work on one of the accelerators and trying to build up the connections and meet the industry people to actually know uh, the actual what is the industry need and do they need our material? Because normally for like scientific mindset is that, oh, this product's perfect. Everyone's going to love that. But actually 
it's not always the case it's because well it's, you always think that your, your baby is the best best part but like you have to validate in a, in a market so that's why we took for like a year time well it's also during the covid like 2019 2020 to actually test it out uh, with the industry people by online meetings and so and so on and also at the same time i was trying to understand more about business only not only about talking to people but also trying to work on like i started my short term of career to, to do management consulting to understand more about the business mindset and trying to how to integrate these resources uh to actually build up startup so then that's how uh well we started to meet the like the founders from just business school and the founders from the previous research group and all these connections back to to cambridge so uh, and then we found out this company just last year uh, may so it's a young company but we're kind of trying to bring all the resources together trying to actually push this new technology that has industry demand to the market. And this is what we're trying to do so far. Actually, mine, in, mine is quite short. Uh, I am a climate activist. And in my master's, I, am, I met with the algae. And after a short uh, literature search, I know algae is going to save the world. So I was thinking about the circular economy models with algae. Then I... Uh, I found the wastewater resources from the industry. Then I show my uh, technology in laboratory bench to the industrialists. They gave me a small reactors, tubular photobar reactors and small chemicals to try it. Then I tried and I approved my technology works well with industry. Then they gave me a grant to build a company, to establish a company. Then I applied all the grants around the world, including United States, Department of State, Turkey Scientific Council, European Commissions, and I took all the fundings to build the first pilot facility in Istanbul. Then it works well. I connect with the customers, then I build a team, and they help us too much to build, to uh, develop this technology uh, like deep tech and we established our patent pending technology for producing biofuels uh, that eliminates the chemical reactions in the production phase and then it goes <laughs> very short stories but very informative speaking of saving the world i always say and the, the proudest thing about she loves like for me is the, our founders they're all saving the world and you're all solving the greatest challenges we're all facing. And in particular, you're all in different industries, very highly industrial and highly competitive, if you will. And I'm sure that you've said a lot of um, positive things, right? But I'm sure, especially as female founders, we have all experienced a lot of challenges along the way. And I'm very curious in the maybe long <laughs> years of your founding and maybe the shorter for, for others, what has been the, that biggest challenge, right? And what has been that uh, main thing that has motivated you to continue forward despite that challenge? Um, I would say two things um, interrelated. So one is around funding, and I think obviously the last year has been very tough uh, with the funding market. Um, of course, that does limit your growth. Um, and, and for us, um, the other thing, obviously, there's a lot more tied to it. Um, for us, it's also hiring and people. Uh, I say this because um, over the last year or two, um, companies such as Google, uh, Microsoft came out, and they really started paying quite high salaries. And here you are, a startup. Um, you can't afford some of the guys that are coming here because, of course, they're getting such large salaries. And so you sit there and you're really trying to figure out how do you do this. Uh, and, of course, it's tied with fundraising. So, you, you know, you don't have the funding to, to give you the talent that you need. Um, and so that's, uh, that, that, to us, is, the, uh, is one of the biggest challenges. Um, but what really keeps us driving is we look at the business and we look at the progress. You know, a lot of times, you know, when you're in this startup world, you start 
you know, you start second guessing yourself and you're thinking, well, am I, did I make the right decision? I, things aren't moving the way they're supposed to. But then when you really look at the business and look at the metrics, they're moving in the right da- direction, albeit being slow, because for example, if you don't have the funding, then you can't really accelerate your growth. But I, I look back at the business and I see the growth, uh, I see growing every time and that's what really keeps us going and it validates. And of course, things like this competition too um, are definitely a very uh, strong uh, vote of confidence in, in, in terms of the business. Um, that's been my experience. Thanks, Leslie. I'm glad that we could be part of that journey to, to move you forward. I have to completely agree. I mean, it's definitely on the new changes with um, hiring and the cost of, of people, but it's the lack of funding and ultimately when it comes to female founders. I mean, we've all heard this morning that we're, we're multitaskers, but there's not enough funding. And I find that in all the years that we've been in business, I mean, we've had to work harder, prove ourselves more, prove more for our technology. The goalposts are always shifting when it comes to investment. You know, they want to see more from women. And why is that? I mean, what is the bias that we're actually experiencing when, as we heard this morning, women reap the reward by more than 20% if you have women in business and in diversity on, in your company entirely. So, You know, we're here and I mean, all of these companies and all of the finalists, their companies are so impressive. They have so much traction and they've done it on so little. And I think that that's the most shocking thing. When you look at women in business, we can achieve so much more with so much less money. And I mean, is that a reason they're not giving it to us? I mean, (laughs) they they know we can we can squeeze every penny for, for even more. But I know that almost all of us are fundraising today, if not Today, maybe next year, you know, we're all growing and expanding and what we need to see is more money coming to women because we can do so much more with it. But like you said, I mean, we look back on our successes, we try to write our updates every month and say, what did we do this month? And every month we shock ourselves and say, did we, did we really achieve all that in just one month? And, you know, we forget because we don't let ourselves ruminate on it enough. You know, we're constantly pushing to try and achieve more because we know we have to. And I think that that's what this day is just really nice to do it's to sit here and uh, look at these 28 companies and say wow like look what we have achieved and take a beat and say you know you're actually doing it you're doing really well and thank you so much actually i'm really 100 percent agree with this funding it's actually really difficult specifics for startups and i think for the challenges that we have been made uh, we have been met so far is kind of like phase, uh, different phases. So at the beginning, before we found a company, like the biggest the biggest voice or the biggest noise in the background is that, well, from the mentors, from the family and friends, from the like the people that we know, is like they're trying to care of us. They're trying to take give us good advice, saying that, well, you're girls, why are you choosing construction industry? It's such a male-dominated industry. Why are you doing this? And um, there are a lot of like kind of voices that are trying to like give you like there's really good advice they're really caring for you but also you have to take it and also make your own decision try to think about well can you do this or how can you do this and a second phase is like exactly what she mentioned is like funding is the biggest problem because well you have to have fundings or grant, no matter it's grant or no matter it's investment or whatever that have to prove that you actually people buying your idea, no matter from industry, from investor, we have to have this validation from like the income or from this type of investment. And the third phase, which I think is also when we're moving forward, is like hiring the talents. It's become another dilemma at the current stage for a company because well, when you're trying, to, especially for a tech company, you're looking for the best, worst, best talents that can do this, like, in ta- like this innovative material, innovative technology. You have to think about Will this talent be able to work in a startup company? Can we give them the best value they can have in the company? So it's also really difficult. And I'm pretty sure in the future we're going to meet more and more and more like that, like problems, challenges. And yeah, I know it's like going to be like challenging, but we're preparing for this. Actually, the most challenging thing is the fe- is to be female founder in the industry, energy and waste sector. Because sometimes I uh, carry the barrels of wastewater or sewage, including poop, by myself in, at nighttime in the industry, in the facilities. 
they don't allow to give the wastewater outside of the facility in the daytime. So I just go, I just went at the midnight to take wastewater to prove something that I can produce biofuels from these poops. I don't give up because everyone uh, believes in me to produce biofuels uh, with sewage or industrial wastewater. But I also uh, solved the environmental disaster in my city, Istanbul, that called mucilage, like eutrophication, caused by the industrial wastewater. So I don't give up because I saw my city needs these kinds of solution to save yourself save itself, sorry, uh, because the biodiversity kills up to 20% in the Marmara Sea uh, in Istanbul, so I want to save this biodiversity, so I don't give up. So audiences, if you're looking for investments, we have highly investable deals here, and if you're also looking for a job, please find them. Um, so what's next for everyone here? Maybe Leslie again. Yeah, so for, for Go Beba, it's around, I would say, two to three things. Uh, one is um, on the expansion of our products and services, particularly adding more products, more types of products. Right now, we have a very sticky product, um, which does get us to the customer's doorstep. And then so we start to add more things. Um, there's also geographic expansion. Um, across the continents, so Eastern and Western Africa. And then lastly, it's around, um, you know, adding a network, I mean, an ad network uh, platform to, en to enable brands to engage with uh, customers. And uh, finally, around ourselves having private label products, which can help us um, increase our margins. So that will be our, our journey. And of course, we expect to develop um, the largest uh, distribution network for uh, household goods in uh, across the continent. Thank you, Leslie. Wow. Um, so for us, I mean, we're about to start scaling up our pilot production, but we're raising funds for that, of course. I mean, that doesn't come cheap. Uh, and then completing the integration of our technology. So we're working with uh, companies on their e-vehicles. We're working on dishwashers. We're working on construction. So buildings like this will uh, function better. Um, and we're also working with the space industry to protect payloads that are going into space uh, so that they don't vibrate into oblivion before they get there. Um, so over the next couple of years, hopefully you'll be driving a car with some sound vents inside and uh, visiting a building that has sound vents panels to improve its acoustics. Um, but yeah, we have a big manufacturing journey ahead of us over the next two years and also definitely hiring if anyone wants to move to Ireland. Uh, it's a lot colder than it is here, um, but I, I promise the, the, the weather does, does, um, does grow on you. Um, yeah. yeah, so uh, for us actually, uh, we're currently under commercial trials, so basically like for new technologies, specific, specifically in the construction industries that we want to actually trial more applications for the industry to have like more validations. And we're under commercial trials with partner in the UK and also uh, planned a commercial trials next year in the EU. But also we're really looking for opportunities that any uh, construction partners or like like anyone that who have interest about like like uh, this like new material, we want to expand the trials to a like wider like wider world like. Uh, also, like in, in Asia or like the U.S., we want to expand the trials to a larger, larger audience. And second, this actually like yes, we're definitely looking for more investment and funding to support us to make this happen. Because without these like well, it, like investment, it's less likely that we can have this all these trials, all these uh, like testings be happening uh, like without this support. So yeah, this pretty much going to be our main step next stage. And also te in, in terms of a technology roadmap, as what I previously mentioned about, we're doing the self-heating technology. It's just the beginning part. And well, if you're considering like a fully intelligent concrete, it's not only healing, but it can sense, it can feel, it can send signals to the front end engineers. And actually, this is also what we're doing in our lab. So yeah, in terms of technology, well, yeah, we're having more things coming up and well, well, if anyone have interest, please talk to us. I'm really looking for opportunities for any collaborations and funding opportunities. Thank you so much. 
And for IFBio, uh, our next step is to uh, move into the United States and Asian market because the half of global emissions comes from these regions uh, that can, we can capture with algae. Uh, also, the United States and Asia uh, has too many regulations about the waste, about the uh, emissions for the production facilities. So we can provide uh, complying with these kinds of regulations by providing ideal treatment systems to these kinds of facilities. Also, we can produce carbon credits for these facilities to sell in uh, carbon market. So we can create the extra revenue stream for the facilities, uh, including the biofuel sales. Uh, the next thing is to, uh, is to fundraise to make smart hires for marketing and sales team. If you're interested in the biofuels or carbon credits, uh, we can reach us. Thanks. Thank you so much, Leslie, uh, Rona, Liz, and Selen. Although we only have you know, 20 minutes in, in getting to know them, I hope that everyone sufficiently got to see what amazing startups and founders there are here today for you to meet. They are all fundraising, they're all hiring they're all trying to look for partnerships so please find them they're all around this room today and please talk to them thank you so much